been asked to tell a little bit about how best to work with angelic support. Uh, people are wondering, is it necessary to struggle by yourself or can you just get help immediately? Do they help with everything or are there specific phases in your spiritual development when they get more involved? Um, it's very hard to be uh, precise in this because every case is very different. Because from the perspective of angels, um, they tend to think of things in a very long timeline and we can often not foresee the significance of an event. Uh, for instance, if I father a child, it might be that through specific powers which go into this bloodline, six or seven generations from now, uh, a great spiritual writer will be born. Who knows? But they might be involved in starting the creation of that bloodline by mixing me and also all the other progenitors of that line to create that very specific individual with that very specific powers. So there's often angelic involvement but because of our lack of understanding, lack of scale, it is very hard to, um, to see the why of it, to understand the reason of it. And often I found that the very act of um, angelic involvement is in a way to create a decision. And it doesn't matter if it goes this way or that way as long as things are not stuck. So I found that through energetic involvement of angels often they want things to move, to change, to go forward, to evolve. And ultimately, whether you take the left road or you take the right road, everything ultimately leads up to unification with the divine. But if you're stuck and you're not choosing to go left or right, then you're not getting any closer. Um, so in a way, their influence tends to be almost neutral, I would say. Um, as to phases when they get um, involved, in general, I find that once people start to go um, beyond the level of uh, enlightenment, personal enlightenment, uh, then angels start to take more interest in them. Um, so if a person is or is destined uh, to become an enlightened person or a spiritual master or mistress in their incarnation, um, often angels will, yeah, start to follow their progress because they will become a very valuable tool, a very valuable instrument uh, to them if they can be persuaded to go into the divine cosmos. Ultimately the choice is theirs. So if the person wants to stay in the Aramanic cosmos or Luciferic or whatever, that's also fine. The angel can still use them. They can manifest themselves in these different cosmoses and try to work with them. But angels tend to work mostly, and I would not say exclusively, but pretty much with beings which are in the divine cosmos. So there is some tendency towards yeah, the higher evolved spiritual beings to try to get them to move cosmoses into the divine cosmos and to start to cooperate with the angels. Um, so very much the phase where a person um, starts transcending the teachings of the gods and really um, working with the gods pretty much as equals and starts to move beyond that. This is when an angels start to notice an individual or to get an interest in an individual. Um, so, as you can tell, there's not that many humans that angels would be interested in. Um, as regards to the, to the processes, uh, there's one thing they tend not to get involved with, and that is with karma. Karma doesn't exist on all planets, but it does on ours. And karma basically means result of action, so everything you do before will continue influencing you through time. Uh, so we're in a way carrying a lot of baggage from all our ancestors, from our previous lives, from the energies of everything that happened before on that place. 
So um, it's kind of like a, a constant weight we're carrying around. Um, but also it's a library of tools, of skills, of habits which we can use, but we can also be weighed down by or trapped by. And this is very typical for all life forms here on earth that they have a karma. And um, this seems to be a rather off-limits area um, because it's very much a choice for beings to be born in a place where karma exists. It's not the only planet, but it's one of the few where karma exists. And um, it has a very peculiar method of evolution by, in a way, rehashing and reworking all the lessons and combining all these different elements from all these lives into something new again and again and again. So I compare it a little bit like playing with Lego. You can break it apart and from the house you had before you build a car, you break apart the car and then you build a plane. So it is the same elements which you're recombining and you're getting more and more elements added to it but also your ability to build more and more complex structures also grows over incarnations. And this whole process of collection is a process they somehow never get involved in. Um, so that's an area which is yeah, well, without angelic support. But on pretty much every other level um, they can uh, support us if they feel it is necessary. And I've had um, yeah, a few instances of, of this support but I will talk about that in the, in the next video. Um, What's important uh, to note is that, uh, I have mentioned this before, that um, we can invite higher powers, so we can use names of angels, we can use symbols of angels, we can use pictures of angels, we can work with the Holy Spirit to create a holy space, to bless a space, to create a temple or a church. Um, and so this in a way makes it easier for an angelic being to work in such a place or to work with the people there but it doesn't guarantee anything um, and these energies themselves um, already work upon us and uh, it's very important to do that in a method which is step by step so in ancient Egyptian temples you had like the outer temple the middle temple and the Sanctum Sanctorum, the most holy place. And depending on a person's energy body and skill and awareness, they would be working and living on one of these three levels. And the same is true for us. If I get confronted with a very angelic energy straight away, uh, it would probably be very harmful for me. It would create a big backlash. I could not deal with it. My body yeah, it's too full of heavier, of lower energies, uh, which cannot coexist with this higher energy and would thus dissolve and fall apart. Um, so I would, yeah, simply like either be harmed or go crazy or not being able to tune into it or notice it that even, because out of self-protection I would block out this uh, this energy or this ability to tune into that energy even. Um, so ultimately you benefit most from an energy which is on your level. You can receive that, you can work with that, you can feed off that. And also if you're inviting angelic energies into your house, whether it is through prayer or through icons or through um, having your place sanctified, uh, try to work with powers which you feel ready to work with. Don't just heap more and more energies into your place because all you will do so ultimately blind yourself completely because if you get overloaded you just simply lose your own talent your own sensitivity and a little bit like a drug addict people who start losing their own power their own sensitivity they try to compensate for it by having more same with cocaine if you're no longer getting the same hits people take more so people become religious addicts power addicts and they start adding more icons more blessings more power, inviting more spirits, because their own sensitivity and power is decreasing and they try to compensate for it. So this is a very sure sign that you're on a very bad road if yeah, the 
divine presence is growing out of control around you. Ultimately, what should happen is it should be in harmony. You should feel at home, at peace. You should not feel uplifted, overwhelmed or energized by the place you're in. You should feel this is a good place to be in. I feel relaxed. This is my home. And if you get that kind of feeling, then the energy in the place where you are is good. It's correct. And if you feel extremely uplifted or excited or whatever, then you're probably overdoing it a little bit already. <laughs> but as you grow spiritually, you will feel that, okay, what used to be a very nice energy is, yeah, it's still nice, but it's actually holding you back. It's no longer inspiring you. It's no longer uplifting you. It's no longer creating the desire to move up, to get closer to it. So the in a way, the energy around you should be like half a step ahead of where you are. So it is close enough for you to feel, to catch, to feel the impulse, and it just entices you to take a little movement forward without stressing you, without burdening you. And this is the ideal way to, to work with angels. The other thing to do when you're working with angels and asking for the blessings is it's often best to do this indirectly. Um, there's three types of prayer, which I've already uh, discussed in other videos. Um, and it is not right to use invocations with angels. We can have the authority to summon a god, a deity, if we are on a level of enlightenment. But we never have the authority to summon an angelic being. Um, so doing so is actually wrong, and it's important to note that this is wrong. What we can do is to apply for it through other powers which do have that authority. So you could ask the Holy Spirit, um, you could ask um, uh, Jesus Christ, you could ask the Supreme Being, to please send an angel to support you or to grant the blessings of that angel to you, which is actually a better idea because you don't want the angel itself to appear, you just want to receive the power, knowledge, wisdom, insights which that angel has to offer to you. And this can then be given to you by one of its servants. So this is usually the best method to in a way, go to a friendly channel, which you have already developed through your uh, earlier prayers, and then see if that higher power, which is already friendly to you, is willing to send an angelic being or another lower power like uh, a spirit to come to your aid. So, it is a little bit compared to, um, for instance, if I'm, I have been imprisoned and I think it's been, I've been wrongfully imprisoned, I can try to appeal directly to, uh, to the judge. That generally won't work. But if I appeal through the king or the queen of the country, who can then petition the minister of justice, uh, then sometimes things can be changed or can be overturned or a new court case can take place. Um, because ultimately, directly, the judge judges me. I don't judge the judge. But if the judge makes a mistake, I can go to a higher authority to have them judge the judge. But I don't do it. In the same way it is working with angels. I cannot command an angel. The angel can command me. But I can't go to another power which can either petition the angel more successes, successfully than I can or uh, which can actually command the angel. And this is why saints I think are very essential, very important. Uh, because a saint can very easily hear our prayers, hear our requests. And if they think that the request is right and just and should be heard, they can, in a way, transfer our wishes and put them on the desk 
of a higher power and say like, ooh, have a look at this, wouldn't this be an interesting idea? And I think for this reason, working with enlightened beings, uh, whether human or otherwise, uh, is very uh, important as in a way a portal to working with angelic energy.